All right, what's up, y'all? AJ Simmons here again with another great interview for you. This is this is one of the uh, most requested uh, videos. A lot of people wanted me to have this guy back on. He's a second time appearing on this show, so I want to welcome back Mr. Colton, a.k.a. C.J. Wood. What's up, C.J.? Yeah, man, so my name is Colton Wood. I'm from out of Charlotte, like North Carolina, and um, I'm in the a commercial cleaning space, and um, I have actually been in the actual industry for a, a few years now, and I have seen, you know, a lot of massive growth in, like, my actual company, and uh, I'm just, like, happy to actually share about it now. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I'm going to jump right into it because I know what everybody want to know. So last time when you was up here, you, were, you was at around about the 60K per month mark. Uh, I wanted to know now where are you as far as gross revenue? Yeah, man. So around last month, we did 189K and some, and some actual change. Um, last year in 2018, we had our first seven-figure year. And it'll be this year. We are, um, we are, we, we actually will do a little over two million dollars, man. So a lot of growth there, man. I'm super pumped about that, also. Wow, man, that's what's up. And I remember in the last interview, you were saying you was gonna push and try to hit it. So congrats on getting that milestone. And you was, uh, you was uh, 22 then. How old are you now? Yeah, man, I am. That's like 24 now, man. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. You killing it. So now the question right after that, that everybody gonna wanna is like, okay, how you do that? So how did you do it? Well, man, uh, there's a lot of like different things, you know, that it just has, um, it just plays into it. But um, I would honestly say, man, I just showed up almost every single day. And, you know, I, I have just like, I have like just basically I have built a great foundation. I have built a great team and I have and I have got a lot of great mentors on like my side that, you know, have have you know they have like almost they have almost like sped up the process so yeah that's what's up so you said mentors in particular really helped you yes sir that's what's up man okay well i'm gonna ask a couple meat and potato questions for for the people that's already in the uh business that kind of want to you know get some deeper knowledge so first question i want to ask you as far as that is uh one of the biggest struggles in this industry is trying to hang on to employees you know employee turnover is kind of high for a lot of companies so I want to know what are some tips or what are some things that you're doing to, to kind of try to help prevent that from happening in your company? Well, what I would say is it's going to happen anyways. I mean, like you cannot keep everybody. It is impossible, but there are there are like certain ways to, you know, almost keep them on board, you know, like such as compensation. You know, you just basically have to make sure that like everyone's eating. And they're just basically able to feed their family. And, you know, as far as your actual, like middle management goes, if they're not well trained, your field employees are, they are not like going to just be as productive as they should be, honestly. So you should pay all of like your workers well, mm -hmm. and, you sh and you should just make sure that, you know, almost everyone just, like knows like their role and what they're doing. Gotcha. Okay. That's what's up. So as far as like uh, when it comes to growing and having employees, like what, how do you balance that? Like as far as getting accounts and getting employees, it's kind of like the chicken and the egg, which one comes first. So how do you kind of balance growing the employee side and growing your accounts all at the same time? Yeah, well, man, oh, what I actually do here, I know that it's just like everyone, like they do it a little different, but like what I actually do is, man, you know, I just basically I get like hundreds and hundreds of of the actual applications, and then I have my employees like we through it. So we're so we are like never done of re recruiting. Uh, we just you know like we just keep on recruiting, and we just we through you know the ones who are not a good fit for our company, and you know we would do the actual like interviews, and like we would obviously screen them, and so yeah. Uh, we just always have them on file, just like ready to pull. So basically just keep them applications coming in because obviously we're going to always be looking for customers. But I think what, what you're saying, the key is also always be looking for employees and not necessarily looking, but just, you know, always taking applications or, some, or something along those lines, right? Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. Okay, so I see that you played around in a lot of different industries. And I know a lot of people, once they hit that level that you hit, 
they probably would have sold by now, right? Going ahead and sold that they got out. But you've you've done different businesses and stuff because I know a lot of people will want to once they hit that certain level. But I noticed one thing is you always keep that cleaning the business. There was like your one main constant thing. You still keep it rolling. So I would I just want to know why is that? I mean, honestly, it's the residual income. I mean, I've had clients like you know, like paying me, you know, like six grand a month, like five grand a month, you know, for years on end, and. Uh, I hate when like people like I know that like people hate like when I say this, but I compare you know, like you know like almost to the to the actual like real estate industry. I mean the actual checks they just keep coming every single month. Yeah, because I mean really when they get it on autopilot, it, it really is like it's passive and a lot of people don't think that you can do that with a service business, but you can. Like I done it, you done it, you know what I mean? Like so it's possible and it really becomes passive by the way once you get it under control and, and being that you got it under control and you seem the success, success that you've seen i want to know like what are you doing how are you staying focused well man it's just pretty easy for me at like this point because like once you start seeing growth you know it becomes like almost like a video game you're just trying to get like to the next level and it becomes fun i come like to the office almost every day, you know, happy, just like looking like what, like, you know, like what is the actual next level? Like, I know that, you know, I have actually grown my company to a pretty good point, but you know, like there are like, you know, like there are just like some like cleaning companies out here doing six and seven billion dollars a year, AJ. Yeah. So, man, you know, I've actually did good, but you know, it's a game now to me almost, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like once you hit it and you see the okay, well shit, I got that. Well, let's see what else I can do. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah. Okay. So far as the people that you know, they already started a business, they like kind of like mom and pops, where they kind of doing it all themselves, or they might got one or two helpers with them. But like what advice would you give them as far as scaling up? Well, man, you know, there's a lot like to it. You know, the actual first thing that like I would say is mindset. Um, you have to, you know, the actual first thing to, to like, just like actually scale up is you have to have your mindset right. Um, I know that there are a lot of people, you know, like who have like parents, uh, you know, kids, like almost like close friends that, you know, they would like, you know, if like you just came to them and said, I'm about to scale my cleaning business to $100,000 a month, they would say, you are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that is impossible. And it's not that they don't believe in you or it's not that, you know, they're not your, a good friend or a good parent or you know, like family member. It's that they just don't know, you know? Right. They, because they, because like they are like regular nine to fivers. They just don't know. Right. And, um, it's as simple as that. You know, like that's the first thing that I would say. The actual second thing is systems, man. Systems, systems, systems. Um, the actual first system that is actually going to help you scale up is all of like your uh, the operation systems. You know, it is very hard to scale past like 30,000 a month with it's just you and a helper, you know? Right. It's not impossible, but it is very, very like difficult. So you need, you know, almost like certain systems in place. So as these actual contracts, they actually come an actual loan, you have a routine and a system in place. The actual next system would be your customer acquisition system. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the customer acquisition system. I like to call it your, um, your like actual like customer acquisition machine. So, I describe it as you can turn the faucet on, and like a lot of like new clients come in, and mm -hmm. then when you have a lot of like new clients come in, then like you can turn it off so you're not overwhelmed. But it's very very like unpredictable almost. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. So would you say that's like the biggest mistake that they're making? Those smaller companies, like, what is that the biggest thing, or that, or is it something else too? Yeah. So like, there are a lot of like different things, and like, 
you know, like them are the actual main things. And, you know, like I would say it's uh, it is a lack of guidance and a lack of like in uh, a lack of guidance and a lack of the like, information because, you know, you just can't Google how to actually do this stuff. You like need like someone to actually guide you on the way. We had like built this program, AJ, to where, you know, like these guys come in and they just basically, man, they are like doubling like their business, you know? Right. It's like, yeah, there's like a, a couple people. Uh, Marcus was in there. He was one of the ones. Uh, so like he learned how to put a higher caller, you know what I mean, from overseas, turned it on like a faucet. Like you said, literally next thing you know, all of these appointments start coming out. I think William Wade got a couple of them like that. A uh, few yeah. people in the, in, in the course, you know what I mean, that did that. So absolutely. And there's no way to Google that. You know what I mean? It's like, it is obviously there's a way to figure it out, right? Because we figured it out, right? But you it was it, the hard way. Exactly. And I paid so much money paying so many different callers, man, <laughs> trying to find the right, you know what I mean, the right fit and how to, you know what I mean, the script and all of these different things, all the different systems I tried that cost me money and time. And it's like, it, once I, once you hire somebody, because I hired somebody too, to yeah. teach me certain things. And once you hire somebody, it could save you so much time and money and you can just implement it. And it literally turns on like a false like you said, man. Yeah, man, absolutely, man. You know, I would say, um, an actual four point would be, man, you know, to, you know, if like you don't want to spend like thousands and like thousands of like, of like dollars or, you know, like just wait years, you know, like you need to hire a mentor or like mentors to like guide you. Facts. And by, and by the way, for anybody listening to this, I just want to go ahead and quick plug this because since you brought it up, go to secrets.cleanbiznetwork.com if y'all interested in that course that me and CJ put together. But I'm going to jump into a couple other questions, too, because I, I see we've run a long time and I want to hold you too long. But uh, I, I see the South Paul Soul Quarian asks, how is your business continuing to grow? And also, did you stay in the same niche or venture out into different ones? Yeah, man. So how we are like actually growing is, man, a team, a system, you know, a lot of the, um, and that's a lot of the things that like we have like, that, that like we already talked about, mm -hmm. a team and a system, man, and a lot of guidance and a lot of trial and error. I mean, like you have to be like risk averse. You have to take risk because, man, if you are scared to leap, man, you will never grow, you know? Yeah. If you are scared to spend a dollar on like paid advertising, what, you know, I'd hate to be mean, man, but you're not, you know, it's not worth you growing. Like you don't want it bad enough, basically. You know what I'm saying? Facts, cause you get out what you put in. That makes sense. Yeah, man, absolutely. And um, out of all of the actual niches are like great. Mm -hmm. You know, I have medical clients, industrial clients, Man, I take them from like everywhere. Um, I know a lot of people is like, they just say like niche down. And you know, like for me, I just don't think that that, that, that like that's true. Right. Like maybe in the beginning, you know, cause it, 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 it could cost you less. Like say for example, if you only focus on uh, offices, and you can't afford the machines and equipment that it takes to, you know, maintain a, a restaurant floor or a medical office floor. Mm -hmm. But it's like, but at some point you're going to have to branch out into these different niches because I mean, you holding yourself back, you're limiting yourself. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Definitely. And uh, so I got another one. Fetty Wap, uh, CBN member, he asked, how did you build momentum in the beginning? And what was your everyday task getting contracts? Um, so how did I build momentum? Um, I would have to say I built, yeah, it's like I built the like momentum by a lot of trial and error, man. It was not, you know, and like actually like easy start to actually scale. Mm -hmm. you know, I just kept trying and trying and trying again. And, you know, I seen something that it, it just worked and I just doubled down on it. You know, it's, as simple as that, man, you know, a mentor like once told me, you know, it is, there is like more gold if you dig than like there is like gold on the surface. Right. You know? So if you see something working, then you should, then you should like just like double down on that and then like you should allocate budget to that. Right. And that is where the momentum is built. Definitely. You understand what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. I mean, if it's working, you feed it. Like a lot of people will take money from one business and the business finally working and they take that money, go put it into something new. And it's like, why did you do that? The new thing might not work. Put it back into this some more. You know what I mean? Get rich first. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, Antoine Stewart asked, he wanted to know, like, if you could share anything, any tips on marketing, SEO, and how important that is for your business. Yeah. So, um, an actual marketing, man, it is major. So, you cannot make almost any money if you do not get uh, attention. And that's basically what the actual marketing is. Now, uh, the SEO, that's just a basic tactic that we don't use much. Mm -hmm. because we don't have any, like, we don't have, like, any say in the actual, like, Google algorithm. Now, right. if we pay Google, then we expect, you know, like, the actual Google algorithm to to just, like, almost push our, our just, like, add, like, to the top of the list because we paid for it. So like we have the a control of that, you know? Right. Uh the SEO man, it's just a shot in the actual dark most of the time. <laughs> right, pretty much. It's like that's icing on the cake, but that paid traffic is really the source. Yep. It's that false yeah. method that we talked about. Yep. And shout out to Antoine Stewart. I forgot to say Clean Biz Network member, by the way. I only got a couple more questions for you if you got the time. Mm -hmm. Uh let's see. Matthew, another Clean Biz Network member, he has uh, how do you manage all those accounts? Oh, man. Again, man, a team, a team, a team. You know, you know, I'm not the actual best leader ever, but I am actually sharpening all of, like, my leadership skills and all of my skills in, like, general every single day. So, you know, the actual better that I can run my team, the more efficient that my company is and the more profit that we make and the larger that we grow. So yeah, man. Absolutely. Okay. And then the final question uh, came from Brittany Deslandez. She's a new Clean Business Network member too. Okay. Cool. Uh, she asked what you've learned since 2017 and like any type of systems or anything that you can share that you wish you would implement it sooner. Um, man, you know, what I've learned, like since like 2016, man, I've learned, man, that you know, to assume that you know nothing. I mean, honestly, um, I'm learning a lot of like new stuff almost like every single day that I want to say like last week I would have never thought about because my mind is it is like consistently open to like just basically almost learning like new stuff. So I keep on moving forward, you know. Right. And I like commend my team like I want you guys to be smarter than me like I want you to like come in here and like show me something you know right so to like just like basically almost keep learning and like just like keep sharpening my skill sets and what I would say is I'm just staying humble you know absolutely all right man well now back to my questions <laughs> all right so I got my last two for you uh, and this question is kind of one that I kind of ask everybody before we leave, but it's kind of a two-part question for you. Right. And the first part of it is, what would you say to somebody that's just on the sideline right now? They haven't even started their cleaning business, but they're looking at it, they're thinking about it, but they're just scared to make that jump. What would you say to them? And then also, uh, what would you say to the person who did start the cleaning business, but they just kind of don't know how to grow it or scale it and they kind of scared to put that money out there and pay for those ads or scared to hire those people because they're scared people can't clean as good you know those type of things so what would you say to those people just on the sideline scared to jump yeah man so you know i can write like both of these questions and like to uh the one because it's basically uh, the same answer like for both okay i just always tell all of our like mentees this aj mm -hmm. um, you are like one contract a away from like 15,000 a month like right. like one contract you are one contract away right. a few months ago i uh, i acquired a $75,000 a month contract like that is crazy right <laughs> right <laughs> like and it came from $6 in ad spend you have to realize that so i spent 6 bucks to almost get a lead, right? Right. And now this lead, it pumps seventy five thousand dollars into my cleaning business every single month for the next three years, nonstop. Wow. So it's it's like 
the actual same as the actual cold calling or like man you are one you are like one like door knock away from you like changing your life your actual family's life you know like you are one contract away so that's that's yeah. huge man that's crazy because you're right it is the same answer for both whether you started already or whether you started and you kind of scared to scale up you just gotta remember, like you really only one. You just an action away, whether it be a call, whether it be a door knock, whether it be, uh, you know, asking. Just open your mouth, man. <laughs> like take action, cause you're right. I mean, a contract could be as big as you know, fifty thousand a month, a hundred thousand a month. You seventy five thousand a month, like you said. Like it could be any size. It could be two hundred a month, but shit, you could use it to extra two hundred a month. It could be any amount. And the only way that you're gonna get it is if you get out there and take action, man. So that's huge. I appreciate that, man. I'm sure they appreciate that too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, attention is key, man. Attention is key. You got to get it. Yeah, I, I see one more question I forgot to ask too. She's okay. a previous network member, so I got to ask it by Miss Nicole. She just wanted to know if you might consider, uh, you know, I guess awarding a scholarship or something to like smaller cleaning companies. Is that something you might consider in the future? Oh, yeah, man. Like for sure, man. You know, I love to like help out like a lot of like business owners, man. Like, um, like I said, um, I got a mentorship program like with um with like AJ and you you know that's exactly like what like we do is like we help like small like cleaning business owners all right. day and for you know with the value that like we like provide you know AJ I would say it is relatively cheap you know I, I question myself every day like wow we are really giving a ton of value away. Listen, you and me both. <laughs> so you and me both. That's life changing right there. And as far as an actual scholarship, I would love to actually look into that and you know almost have a conversation with her about yes. it because you know I do give money to like a lot of charities now. Right. And, um, for sure, man. I feel like that's something that you know would be some well spent money. Absolutely. That's what's up, man. All right. Well, I ain't gonna hold you too much longer, man. Where can they find you to follow your journey? If they want to hit you up after the interview, ask any questions or ask you about the course that we got, where can they find you? Yeah, man. So like you can find me on a national Instagram. It'll be CJ Wood underscore underscore. Or like you can just type in on my actual name, like Colton Wood on Facebook or the Instagram. And like, you'll find me, man. So like, you, yeah, man, like I would love for like you to message me like a net. I'm a pretty busy dude. I got a pretty big company, man. So I'm, I, you know, I am, I got him busy a lot, man, but I will get back to you for sure. So. That's what's up, man. I truly, truly, truly appreciate you taking out this time doing this interview with me, CJ. Uh, if you don't have anything else, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, man. I appreciate you coming on, though. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Like, that was great, man. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right. Thank you.